welcome to the program. This is Everyday Woman here on KTN Home and we are glad you are tuned in. My name is Eustace Segate. Well, it's another day here on this show to host yet another amazing woman doing incredible things out there. Our guest today is a career strategist and a professional HR. I would say she is a destiny shepherd. It is now my pleasure to welcome Lea Awiti Omeo. How are you? Fine, thank you. Hi. Hi. Yes. I'm amazing and you look fantastic thank today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for mm -hmm. coming to the show. Thank you. Well, we already have an overview of who you are and what you do. Okay. But uh, it would be proper for us to know, you know, more about you, mm -hmm. where you grew up, mm -hmm. and how was life back then? So, my name is Leah Witio Mill. I'm a human resource manager, career strategist, interview coach, and I help job seekers to win. So, I'll take you back to I was born in Kakamega, Mukumu Hospital. Um, I think I was 6.5 to 7 months, there and about, and I remember my mother saying, you know, I thought you would die. So I grew up in Kakamega, then we moved to Nakuru, then we moved to the village when my, uh, my dad fell sick. Um, at that moment, I lost my dad in a family of six. So we are six in total, and at this moment I'm losing my father and my mother um, has to continue with the journey without my father. So we enrolled or we were enrolled in a school with my younger sister. I have a younger sister. So we go to this school um, in the village, Moego Girls Primary School. And then um, after some time, my mother decides that we're not going to live in the village. Uh, she was not for the idea. I really don't know why I was young at that moment. Against the wishes of my uncles, of course, the people who were left behind to take care of us. And it becomes a journey, a journey of moving from the village back to Nakuru, and then we move to Kisumu, and then we move back to Nairobi. It was a lot of movement. Um, and I remember that at some point I had to take care of her because now she was left in a vulnerable position or a situation where my siblings were in high school being taken care of by, by my uncles and then myself and my younger sister we had to take care of her so i saw her go through the depressing moments and what i would say is for that moment i blamed her so much so much until when my brother joined us when my brother joined us he's the firstborn we didn't know what his intention was so nick comes in and we blend in and we are a good family and one day he says when your mother leaves i need you guys to carry your bags yes so it's it's myself and my younger sister and i ask why 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 do we need to carry our bags why do we need to pack everything mm -hmm. he says i need to take you guys back to your uncles to the village to the village so that you can go to school mm -hmm. because my mom could literally not do without my father mm -hmm. so we watched her live and then we packed our stuff and then we were taken to Mamlaka, Mamlaka Serena where my uncle was at that moment. He was a lecturer at the UON and from there we had a family meeting and we were taken to my grandma's in the village. I think that that was um, a bit traumatic for me but also I believe that the adults were doing what they were supposed to do for the young, the young ones. Mm -hmm. I also believe that my mother loved us. That's why she didn't want to let us go. But the best decision that my brother ever made for us was stealing us away from, from her. At what age were you? So at this age, I'm around seven, eight, nine. Mm -hmm. My younger sister um, is around six, five, six, mm -hmm. there and about, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, um, you, you sort of had an understanding of what was happening and also were you in a position to question and mm -hmm. if at all you did, yes. the answers that you're given, were they satisfactory enough for you? When, when we left and came to my uncles, I had questions, yes, but I could not question because I was too young. I just trusted the process, yeah? And um, I was tired of seeing my mother in that situation where she's depressed, she's taking alcohol, I literally have to take care of her. 
I am young and I can make my way to Gikomba at that age. Oh my, by yourself? By myself, because my sister is still young, I can't <laughs> tag her along with me. You know, so when she falls sick, I have to take care of her. <laughs> yeah, so right. I, I didn't question. Okay, so when you say your mother left, mm -hmm. where did she live to? Mm -hmm. And uh, how did the whole ordeal like happen and did she, you know, figure out? My mother used to go to the market in the morning because she was a business person mm -hmm. at that moment. Yeah. So on this day, it's a Saturday and she goes to the market as a routine. So my brother says we need to time her. When she goes to the market, that is the moment we park our stuff and then leave without her presence because if she were there, we were not going to leave. She was never ever going to allow my brother to take us away. Mm -hmm. Now you leave, you go to the village. Somehow, somehow, I think, did she know where you, you were? Of course. She did? Of course she did. Mm -hmm. She did and it was a big fight between her and my brother. She kept on asking, how, how dare you? How dare you take my kids away from me? And my brother had the big question, you know? Mm -hmm. They are here, they're not going to school. You are struggling, literally. You're having the, the elder one at this moment take care of you. They're not okay mentally. And you ask me the question of why I'm taking them away from the people, um, away from you, mm -hmm. to the people who are supposed to be taking care of them, who are my uncles and my, my grandmother. Yeah, so oh. they had a big fight, okay. they did. Did life now become better now that you were uh, moved to a better place? Oh wow, life became better. I remember, I, I didn't miss my mother. I, I didn't miss her, unfortunately, because it was difficult to transition from Nakuru in a bungalow to where she took us because she was struggling. Now we moved to the village where my uncle and my grandma and everyone is willing to take care of us. But when we arrive, my grandma is so pissed. She is so mad. She's like, I said that these kids are not supposed to be taken away. You know, mm -hmm. literally. Mm -hmm. So our mom stole us from them. <laughs> yeah. Against their wish. Right. And then now, you're taken you're just, back. Yeah, you're ambushing me with kids again, mm -hmm. you know? It's not fair. Wow. For, my, for my grandma, it was not fair. Mm -hmm. So I had my sister Viola. Viola is one of the sisters I really, really rely on in life. Mm -hmm. We had her come in to talk to my grandma and explain it to her mm -hmm. in the loo and tell her, hey, you know, these are kids. They didn't do anything to mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Adults made decisions mm -hmm. for them, right? In as much as you didn't want them to be taken away, somebody else took them away. So do not put the blame on the kids. Just right. embrace them in their innocence and do what you can at this moment. <laughs> so then we are sent to a boarding school. That is Noego Girls Primary School. It's just around home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, this is the first part of the story and we are here with um, Lea. And already you can tell she had a tough beginning of her life. But you know what, years on, she managed through and she is now a household name, if I may say so. Um, at this point, Lea, you allow us to take a short commercial break. We will be back with more to just see how she became the woman she is today. <music> Welcome back and thank you for watching Everyday Woman. Remember, you can engage us on our social media platforms at KTN Home across all platforms. We'd like to hear from you. Well, just before we took a break, we were talking to Leah about her childhood. Now, Leah, yes. bring us to speed. How then did you manage, did you maneuver through all that, you know, up to a point where you got stability and you kind of started having a sense of direction and understanding what it is that you are mm -hmm. actually supposed to do with your life. Wow, so that's a tough one again because when now the parents are not in the scene, yeah. what everyone is doing is doing their best. <laughs> they, they really don't owe you anything. So my uncle is doing his best and he's paying school fees for the whole year. 
So right. there's no coming back home because there's no school fees. So the chances I was given were shelter, clothing, and school fees. He covered those. Huh? So after school, after my go girls, I went to Nyakach Girls High School. I graduated um, with a B minus. Then I went to the University of Nairobi. Um, I pursued a diploma in business management. And then as I was going to school, I was working as well. Oh. So at the age of, you leave high school when you're 18, mm -hmm. at 19, I'd started working. Already? At uh, different companies, I'll mm -hmm. not mention the names. Yeah. So I worked for about eight companies. As number one, a promoter, a brand ambassador, mm -hmm. a merchandiser, a HR professional, an admin, wow. a PA, yes. So I was a hopper from one point to another because number one, I didn't have a clear roadmap of mm -hmm. what really did I want to do with my life. Right. That I didn't know. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I usually followed into Viola's uh, footsteps, my mm -hmm. sister. Yeah. So I pursued business management because I believed that I could do it. But I also didn't like the social interaction that I had with people, you know, at work you have, when you are in the world of business and sales, you have to interact with people day in, day out. Because that was not my personality type. I had to quit at some point. Mm -hmm. So on this day, I'm working at this farm and um, the following day I wake up as usual, I'm preparing to go to work and then I just tell myself, you know what, you don't fit in. Oh, really? For the number of years I worked in those companies, on this day, I'm like, I don't fit in. Mm -hmm. I'm not okay, you know, mentally, I'm not okay. Physically, I'm not okay. I do not want to go back there. Mm -hmm. And I remember my, my supervisor, his name is, uh, or was, Evans. He calls to ask, hey, where are you? And the first instinct is, tell the truth. The second instinct is tell a lie. What a catch 22 there. What did yeah. you say? I said, Evans, Evans, you know what? I think I'm not going to come back. Why? Why are you not coming back? I say, Evans, I feel like this is just it. It's it, it's it for me. I've worked long enough. I have experience in those fields. And just allow me to go. Let me go. Had you like figured out where you're going next? Uh, no, not at all, not at all. But my sister, Fanny, Fanny was a writer. So Fanny would watch me go to work and say, you know what, I pity you. I pity you. You, you struggle so hard, yet I know that you can do writing. You yeah. know, you can be a good writer. Mm -hmm. But you struggle so hard. Why? Why do you do this to yourself? And uh, she said, I remember her words, the day you realize what writing is or content creation is, mm -hmm. you will hate yourself. Did that day come? Yeah, of course mm -hmm. it did. And on this day, I'm quitting and thinking, I really don't know where I'm, I'm going right now. I don't have savings, literally. I do not have money in my account. I do not have money in my circle, but I'm quitting. Mm -hmm. So I get home and I tell my friend, um, her name is Lisa, I tell Lisa, Lisa, I have quit. And you guys are going to help me to learn how to write. Wow. You guys will help me because I'm never ever going back to employment. All right. Yes. Now, you get into writing, mm -hmm. you continue doing your thing, of yes. course. Now, talk to me, at what point now did you decide to shape your desires mm -hmm. or everything that you're working on now mm -hmm. to become who you are today? So writing is a very uh, rewarding job. It pays, it pays well. But here's the thing, as you age, there are days when you can't write completely. And as you turn 27, 28, 29, your brain slows down, you know, your, your body slows down, and you begin to ask your friends, is it happening to me only? Or Tell is it happening it. to you as well? Right. So I call Al, Al is a friend and he was a mentor at that moment. I, I told Al, Al, you know what? I cannot complete 500 words. And I used to do 4,000 words every day. What became of me? That was, yeah, what happened, Al? And Al, Al is 40 at that moment. He says, did you really think that you're going to write <laughs> your entire life? Right. You're not going to do it your entire life. Mm -hmm. So that's your body telling you that it is over for you at that moment, yeah? 
So now I begin to ask myself, what next? What, what next? next? What next? Mm -hmm. So Where I have a course next? outline. I have a course outline in mm -hmm. HR, business management, right? What do I do? I utilize my platform, my Facebook platform, to start something where I begin to share jobs. Mm -hmm. And people are getting these jobs. And they come to me and say, hey, my sister got a job. Do you mind hooking me up? I'm like, no, that is not what I do. I just share with you, you know, that is what I give to the community. Mm -hmm. And then I have this friend, um, his name is Mike. Mike tells me, you know, you give out so much freely. Yeah. You need to monetize what you do. Right. Put a price tag on to it. it. Right. Yeah. So I ask, how? How do I do that? Mm -hmm. He says, I'm going to do a mini website for you. Check it out. Mm -hmm. If it's something you can work with, begin. Wow. So we begin from there, but we don't start with a meal. All right. We start with Lee. My friends used to refer to me as Lee. Lee. So we say Lee Ventures. Mm -hmm. And then I'm into recruitment and placement, but that backfires. Mm -hmm. It backfires because I don't have proper systems and structures in place. I also don't have a manager. I don't have a mentor for this business. Yeah. I do not have a proper structure. So the first time, I fail. Then, how do you pick yourself then, up? Then, I say, you know what, I'm going back to writing because bills have to be paid, right? right? I don't live with anyone at this moment. I have to take care of myself. So I go back into writing. I do it for one more year. And then the demand for jobs continues to go up. Mm -hmm. So I'm forced to try again. This time, I meet, I meet somebody who is willing to guide me. And this person says, here's where you begin from. Mm. And then now you can delve into HR consultancy and then delve into job application services. You don't have to do recruitment and placement only. There are other things within the job uh, search process that you can delve into. I like it. Now then that means mm -hmm. you now had a better footing to yes. what you wanted to do. From that point mm -hmm. to now, mm -hmm. tell me, how has it been like? Highlight for me, you know, give me like a reel of um, how it has been for you. So we moved from Lee Ventures to a meal staffing services, and I'm a bit worried, I'm a bit uh, shaken. And this mentor says, you really don't know what you have. You don't know what you have. You don't know what you're capable of doing. You can grow. Give yourself two years, you know? This is a startup, just give yourself around 18 months. Mm -hmm. If you pass, if you go through the cycle of 18 months, I promise you, you're going to see changes. Yeah. So we begin with uh, a docket of our website, we package ourselves, we begin to brand ourselves, of course, with his help. Usually you need a mentor, you can't do it alone. Yeah. yeah. So it's been a journey of, I'd say, um, perseverance, a lot of hard work. As a founder, you work 18 hours daily. As a founder, you're up most of the time, but also there are rewards yeah. to it. Because I remember that um, I really wanted to quit at first, but today I can say that I can easily offer employment to somebody else, even if it is just part-time, mm -hmm. you know? So I can say we are growing. We are growing as a team. I'm growing as a, as a person individually. There are things I have learned along the way yeah. that failing once does not determine your destiny, you know? And that you need to have a sense of urgency in everything that you do, especially if it is related to business. Have a sense of urgency, be persistent, be consistent, and then you get to grow. And seems like you had a lot of learning to do, you grabbed the opportunity and you moved. Now, I would want to know with all that, do you think you are living the life that you had purpose to? Um, also, do you think you actually, was it easy for you to find your purpose now that you knew what you are up to and how to, you know, roll with it? I would say that the work is not complete, the work is not done. I remember telling my friend, I don't want to be average because when I left home, um, my sister's place, I said, there's a place I want to live in. There's this place I want to live in. Mm -hmm. And I have to live in that place. 
and they don't know how I'll make it to that place. But somehow, you one have day, to live there. One day I have to live there. Yeah. I cannot be average because it's traumatic for me. It reminds me of the, the childhood past. memories. Yes, it yeah. reminds me of that. Yeah. So I would say that I'm at 50%. Mm -hmm. um, I don't settle easily. Mm -hmm. Every day I create something. I'm a creative. This is work on progress because the job is not done. The job is complete when finally you are at 70, 80, 90, and you're retiring and you're handing over the mantle to somebody else. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's that's very that's very deep, and I'm, I'm actually also learning a few things, a few things here and there mm -hmm. as we wind up. You yes. know, because yes. we have to come to the end of this conversation. Yes. We we'll just want to know, you know, what's it like for you when now you know um, someone out there will mm -hmm. reach out to you and mm -hmm. your team to assist, or an organization will reach out to you and your team to assist. How does that make you feel? Even even as you give our viewers um, advice should they want to venture into what you're doing? You know what, so everyone was not structured the same way. There are people who are structured to, hey, go to school, score your A's, get employed, and you're going to work for these companies. You know, they're such parents. Yeah. And then their parents will tell you, jump. Then so, ask how high? <laughs> how high, you know, just jump. Yeah. Personally, I jumped because, hey, no one was giving me direction. So if you are there, you're seated there and wondering what direction should I take? There's something called intellectual property, and then there's something called transferable skills. And then there's the passion that you have. Mm -hmm. And then there's the calling, you know, what were you called to do? You need to identify those ones before you take any decision or before you make any decision before you jump in, before you quit. I know there are people who want to quit today. Yeah. They want to quit tomorrow, but have a clear roadmap before you do that. Absolutely. And what a better way of ending this conversation than that already we've picked mm -hmm. tips from you. Yes. And we are so glad that you're graceful enough to share your story so and welcome. the tips. Yes. It was a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much for having me feel appreciated. You're welcome. Okay. Well, that's it from us here on Everyday Woman Show. It was such an honor to host Leah. And I like the fact that I have equally learned and I know you've also learned. Remember, you can continue catching this conversation and you can also continue engaging her on social media for you to learn more. Thank you so much for tuning in to KTN. Let's meet another day.